Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk to you about the MUDs taking a cruise bundle that is going to be arriving to the PC MUD store later this week on August 24th, 2023. As always, chapters are listed down below for those of you that want to skip ahead to discussion about a specific item in the bundle, or my thoughts on where this bundle stacks up against the other MUDs bundles out there. The first thing I want to talk about today is what this bundle is going to cost you if you're wanting to pick it up. So there's two different options for this. There's the pick three choice pack, which will let you pick three of the items from the bundle. And then there is the mega bundle, which will give you everything that this bundle has in it. The pick three choice pack has a base cost of 29,500 Zen or just under 300 US dollars. And if you're wanting the mega bundle, just note that the price listed in the blog is most likely incorrect. They're listing that the Mega Bundle will cost 60,000 Zen or $600. However, this MUDS Bundle only has seven items in it, and this part of the blog lists eight items. Now, the prior MUDS Bundles that only had seven items in them had a Mega Bundle that cost 50,000 Zen, so it's 100 bucks cheaper. And I'm going to assume that they are going to follow that trend here and that this part of the blog is a typo. So basically 300 bucks for the pick three choice pack and then 500 for the mega at the base cost. But there will be a 50% introductory sale from August 24th up through September 7th for those of us on PC, which means that you can get the pick three choice pack for 14,750 Zen or just under 150 bucks. And the mega bundle should be about 250 to $300, depending on whether or not they do that reduced cost like they did with the prior MUDs bundle. So pretty expensive. And I'll tell you right now, I do not think the mega bundle is worth it. I think the pick three choice pack is the only option that makes sense for, for this bundle. I do not think that the secondary aspects of this bundle, like the elite bridge officer training tokens are really worth you spending an extra hundred to 150 bucks. Now, before I dive into the breakdown, I do also just want to quickly mention that alongside the release of this MUDS bundle, there will also be a 75% sale on all of the non-bundle items in the MUDS store from August 24th up through August 28th. So if you have any of the older non-bundle MUDS items you're wanting to grab, you know, go through and take advantage of that. Now let's head into the breakdown for the different options this bundle has. Okay, so now I wanna go through and take a look at each of the seven options that this bundle has. I'm going to do a quick overview on the ships, then go over the, the consumable options here, and then I'm going to go back and look at the, the ships one by one in a bit more detail. Um, the ships, the individual breakdowns will be in the timestamps down below for those of you that want to skip to those sections. So the first option here is the 23rd Century Ship Pack. This is the promotional offering from this MUDS bundle, and the picture here is not lying. If you go through and you select this option from the MUDS bundle, you're not getting one ship, you're getting three. You're getting the Temporal Light Cruiser, which is a Constitution, you're getting the D7 Temporal Battle Cruiser, and you're getting the Talis Temporal Warbird. These ships all released at the exact same time several years ago. They have the exact same trait, the exact same console. The difference is with their Bridge Officer layout. So that is why the three of them are grouped up as an individual option in the Smuds bundle. Now, this is not the first time they have grouped multiple ships into the same selection in a Muds bundle. Some notable examples would be the Stealing Time bundle, in which if you get that and you select the Temporal Science Vessel or the Destroyers, you're getting the Fed, KDF, and Romulan variants of those ships. And if you have the Into Darkness bundle, the Kelvin Timeline Starship Pack, when you get that from that MUDS bundle, you're getting three different ships. You're getting the Kelvin Connie, the Talaru, and the D4X. So if you go through and you claim that box from the MUDS store, it's letting you pick those, each one of those ships. And you can claim that box over and over again as many times as you want until you get all of those ships on your character. And you're getting them account-wide. 
So if you're getting this mods bundle, the 23rd century ship pack is definitely the primary reason that you are picking this bundle up. The second option here is the Jemadar light battle cruiser. This is a lockbox ship and it's a little bit dated, but for those of you that really like the Dominion Jemadar side of the game, it's definitely a ship to consider. And then the Lobi option for this Smuds bundle is the Walker class light cruiser. This is a very outdated ship. And as you'll see when I go over the stats of it here in a couple minutes, it's going to be a ship that you can very easily skip over in this bundle. Now, if you do the pick three choice pack and you do not want one or more of the ship options from above, there are four different consumable options that you can select. The first is 50 master keys. Now, as far as I know, each of these consumable options here on this bottom row are bound to you. So you can't go out and sell the master keys or the elite bridge officer training tokens. However, with the master keys, if you win a ship or you get some trait boxes, you should still be able to sell those. So option one for consumables is 50 master keys. Option two is 300 lobby crystals. Now the lobby crystals here are very much a noob trap on cryptics part. And the reason that I say that is because the only people that would that would go out and select 300 lobby over 50 master keys are people that are new to the game and do not understand how the lockbox and the economy side of the game works. The reason I say that is because 50 master keys on average gets you about 270 lobby, but could potentially get you over 300 lobby, depending on how lucky you are with the lobby drops. So 50 master keys get you about the same amount of lobby, but if you choose the 300 lobby crystal option from this, you are voluntarily taking the 50 master key option basically, except you're voluntarily not taking the 50 lock boxes worth of items. So it just makes no sense at all to pick the 300 lobby crystals over the 50 master keys when the keys are getting the getting you the same amount of lobby basically plus 50 lock boxes worth of items so definitely make sure to go for the keys over the lobby if that's what you're wanting to do then we have 10 ultimate tech upgrades these are really convenient for going through and instantly upgrading a piece of gear up to mark 15 epic however if you're able to dump this type of money into the game to afford a muds bundle like this you should have no issue going out and getting a ton of Phoenix upgrades, which should be a little bit cheaper overall. So I, I would say, you know, just go with Phoenix upgrades. Yes, you'll have to click a little bit more, but to me, the Phoenix upgrades just make more sense to go for than the 10 ultimate tech upgrades here. And the final option is 16 elite bridge officer training tokens. I don't really value these things very highly. Um, I still haven't really used them, even the free ones that I've gotten from events. I, I think I've used like one or two. It just, there isn't much practical end game use for these Elite Bridge Officer training tokens. The The only thing that I can think of, um, and McStew brought this up when I was talking to him earlier, the only like convenience factor that these things offer is that when you use one of these on a bridge officer, it will automatically, you know, train all of the basic abilities to the, that bridge officer. So if it's attack bridge officer, it's going to train all of the basic attack abilities to that bridge officer for you. Same for engineering or science. It's not training up any of the specializations, but you know, that could save you a little bit of time if you're trying to, to go through and, you know, set up a new character or something. So, it's a little bit of a convenience factor, but I don't think that is an option that you should select. Um, for me personally, I'll tell you right now, I would go for the 23rd Century Ship Pack, the Gemadar Light Battle Cruiser, and the 50 Master Keys. Now, I'm going to go through and take a look at the ships here one by one. I do want to start with the Walker class, though, because I just think that that is an incredibly weak option, and I think it's an easy skip for basically anyone out there. Okay, so why exactly is the walker such a weak option? Well, 
it has a good weapon setup of 5-3. Its consoles are actually fine, given the, the current meta with the isomag stuff. So it's three tac consoles, five engineering, three science. So you can't do locators on it that effectively, but you could do an isomag setup on it perfectly fine. However, what makes the ship really weak is the bridge officer setup. It's got a commander engineer, a lieutenant commander TAC, an ensign engineer with intel, a lieutenant commander science, and a lieutenant universal with pilot. So it's a lieutenant plus ensign spec combo, which just is not the most competitive in the current state of the game. Now, this ship is not completely worthless. There is some nice utility on the ship. The starship trait is unfortunately something that I would just classify as garbage right now. It's a plus 20 energy weapon, armor, and shield pan for 8 seconds when you first enter combat, along with minus 50 weapon power cost. However, this buff only happens when you first enter combat. So it's a really small buff that doesn't last for very long. Not really that useful with the, the traits that we have nowadays. But the console, on the other hand, is actually something pretty useful from the, the walker here, and that is the obfuscation screen console. This is really popular in PvP and has had a couple of PvE use cases over the years. Basically, with this console, when you activate it, it makes you untargetable, it holds you in place, and it also makes you unkillable. So if you're in PvP and you're getting just absolutely slammed, you hit this console and nobody can target you for up to 20 seconds. But once those 20 seconds are over, or however many seconds you were in it until you turned it off, you will get a 120% cat 2 bonus damage buff equivalent to the time that you were held in the console, which again caps out at a max of 20 seconds. So it's pretty nice for like an escape style clicky for, for PVP. And there are some use cases in PVE, like some of the Thaleron runs, where this console was a core part of some of the methods being utilized by players doing that stuff. Um, it's not necessarily a meta console that everyone needs to have, but it does have some use cases. The issue for the walker though, is that there is a legendary version of it that just walks all over it. The Legendary Walker is available in the Legendary Discovery Federation Captain Bundle, which does get as cheap as 7,800 Zen or 78 bucks during the 35% bundle sales. And that Legendary Walker just has a significantly better bridge officer setup, and it comes with the trait and console that the Walker Light Exploration Cruiser has. So the, the Walker is just a very weak option for this smuds bundle and is a ship that you could very easily skip. I, I think if you want the utility it has on account white unlock, you'd just be better off going through and picking up the legendary version of the Walker outside of the smuds bundle. Okay. The next ship I want to talk about is the Gemidar light battle cruiser. This is the lockbox ship option from the smuds bundle. Now this Gemidar light battle cruiser is a little bit dated at this point. But it is still a decent ship, especially for those of you that are big fans of the, the Jem'Hadar ships out there. This is one of the, the more iconic ones from the, uh, the shows, from what I remember. So this thing has a 5-3 weapon setup. It has a Commander Engineer, a Commander Universal, a Lieutenant Commander TAC with Intel, and a Lieutenant Science. So the thing that is really special about this ship is the Dual Commanders. There are other ships out there that have dual commander seats that are probably a little bit better than this nowadays, like the United Defense Force vessel. But if you're looking for, for something to play around with that has a commander engineer plus another commander, this is something you may want to consider. For the console setup, it's four tack, four inch, and three science. So you can go with the, uh, the isomags or locators or exploiters if you want. And it does have weapon system efficiency for those of you that like that cruiser command. The utility on this ship isn't anything game changing. The starship trait is obedience is victory. And what this does is when you hit team abilities like TAC team, Psy team, Intel team, and so on, it will summon a Jemadar attack ship. 
and every time you then hit another team ability, it will extend the duration that that attack ship can stay in the map by 20 seconds. So it's it's a fun trait for another summon if you're looking to get another pet in the map, but it's nothing, you know, nothing game changing. The console off of the ship is personal wormhole generator, and this is actually uh, like I'm pretty sure this is a meta console for PvP because it's an escape console. Doesn't have really any practical use in PvE, but if you're someone interested in PvP, this is a nice escape console to have on account wide unlock. So that may be a factor for some of you out there. Overall, I think the Gemidar Light Battlecruiser is good enough that if you're getting this bundle that I, I think you should consider picking it up. I think it's a fun ship to fly. And if you have any Dominion characters, it'll be a fun ship to mess around with on them. And having that escape console on account wide unlock, if you ever do want to get into PVP, might be something appealing to you. And heading over to the 23rd century ship pack, which again is going to be the main attraction to getting the smuds bundle. I want to start off with the constitution temporal light cruiser. This is the original T6 constitution class that they put into the game several years ago. And the setup on this thing is actually still pretty decent. It has a commander engineer with temporal operative, a Lieutenant Commander TAC, a Lieutenant Commander Science, and a Lieutenant Commander Universal with Command. It has a 5-3 weapon setup, 4 TAC consoles, 4 Engineer, and 3 Science. And it has access to cruiser commands like Weapon System Efficiency. So it's overall, it's a pretty decent 5-3 platform for, for a cruiser. And... There are other ships out there that are going to be comparable nowadays, and some of which are going to be better. Um, if I look at the sortable filterable ship list and I look for ships that have a commander temporal plus a lieutenant commander command, you can see that there are a few different options out there. The, the Enterprise J line of ships here, uh, the Cheval, the, the Kirk, the, the Legendary Glen, the World Razor. Like there, there's a few ships with this type of combo nowadays. For the Connie th or the the Connie Temporal Light Cruiser here, the the ship that I would say is closest to it when I look at this, yeah, you know, I think it's pretty close to the the Kirk. So if you like how the Kirk is set up bridge officer wise, you might like this Constitution Temporal Light Cruiser a little bit better. The World Razor, I'll tell you right now, is definitely a, a better ship for, for like its damage potential. The, the World Razor basically beats every other ship on this list for, for its damage potential. Um, but for like a, just a, a Connie that you want to fly around, this temporal version is, is quite capable. So it's, it's pretty solid and there is a legendary version of this specific variant of the Connie. However, it's a 4-4 with a dual Miracle Worker setup. So it's it's fine. Like you can make it work, but the the temporal light cruiser variant is definitely better in my opinion. Now before I get into the other two ships in this 23rd century ship pack here. I do just want to mention the Starship trait and console. So the Starship trait on all three of these ships is built to last. And what this does is while this trait is slotted, activating a whole healing bridge officer ability will apply a weapon power cost reduction and a whole regen buff. So it's a nice trait, not necessarily meta, but you may find use for it on alts. And the console here is the ominous device. This console has a passive on it for plus 20% cat one all damage, which has been useful for, for a variety of builds over the years, trying to buff up things that ha don't have a ton of damage sources or a, a ton of damage buffs. The clicky on this does some little control effects to your opponent. Um, it's not a meta console, but you may find uses for it somewhere. I know a lot of people use this on their alts. It's just a nice console that they can grab off the one of the legendary variants of these ships. Um, so it's okay, but nothing that I would keep on your build, you know, very long term. 
The next ship here is going to be the D7 Temporal Battlecruiser. So the D7 Temporal Battlecruiser is a ship that I have praised quite a bit over the, the past couple of years. I think it is an incredible beam overload platform. There are other ships that can do very well with beam overload, but I've always found that this ship just has a very, very nice punch with it. Now, the other thing is too, is while there's a lot of ships, like if I go back and I was looking at that, that temporal light cruiser again, the temporal Connie, if I look at the same ship comparison list, but I look for ships that have a commander temporal plus Intel, it's it's not the same picture as what we just saw with the the temporal light cruiser. There's very few ships that have a temporal and intel combo like the D7 temporal battle cruiser has. So let me go over the the setup it has here: commander engineer with temporal operative, lieutenant commander attack, lieutenant commander science, and a lieutenant commander universal with intel. Five three weapon setup, four attack consoles, four engineering, and three science has a battle cloak and still has that weapon system efficiency cruiser command. So this D7 temporal battle cruiser is quite unique with its bridge officer combination. There is not many other ships out there that have a temporal plus Intel combo like this ship has. And that is a very powerful combo for, for like a beam overload build. So I, I think for anyone that really wants a really high end beam overload platform to have on account wide unlock this is nice but there are cheaper ships that you can use to do just about the same thing um the hydra you know that that is still a really good beam overload platform or you can use surgical strikes on it which is actually che cheaper to set up the fleet bozeman is also pretty good for beam overload or surgical strikes like the, there are cheaper ways to make a really good beam overload build but this ship I've always found, if you're looking to do that recursive shearing also, just has a, a really nice punch compared to some of the other ships out there. Now, there is a legendary version of this D7 also. This is the legendary D7 Intel Battlecruiser. However, it does change things up a little bit. It has a commander, in, a commander engineer with Intel and then a lieutenant commander universal with Merc Worker. So that Intel America worker combo is still really good. And that is a really good ship. You can do a lot of the, the things on this legendary version that the, the temporal version can do, but explicitly looking at like a beam overload, I think that D seven temporal just, it just feels really nice and unique compared to the other ships out there. Now, the last ship here is the, the uh, Talis Temporal Warbird. The Talis Temporal Warbird is not a bad ship. It's it's also pretty good. It's got a Commander Tack with Temporal Operative, a Lieutenant Commander Engineer, Lieutenant Commander Science, and a Lieutenant Commander Universal with Pilot. This ship has actually been pretty popular over the years for for like PvP. The legendary Talis is also a very good ship, but it has a different play style. The legendary Talis, which is based on this ship, is focused more on like a, being a stealth tort bomber type thing. This Talis is not really focused on the torp side too much. So it's a bit of a different play style versus the, the legendary Talis. Does still have a 5 2 weapon setup plus experimental weapon. Um, it's got a Romulan enhanced battle cloak, so you can fire torps from this thing if you want while cloaked. Um, it's got the singularity stuff on it. It's it's a good ship, but I'll tell you right now that if you're looking for a temporal plus pilot combo, the legendary Valdor that we just got earlier this year is very comparable to the Talis Temporal Warbird. And in some ways, some of you may prefer the legendary Valdor over the Talis. And the reason for that is that the Talis only has four bridge officer slots. The legendary Valdor basically downgrades the Lieutenant Commander Engineering and Science down to Lieutenants, and that allows you to pick up a Lieutenant Tactical. So you have five bridge officers, so you can slot like another SRO. So 
these ships are you know all good but there is pros and cons versus the legendary versions that they have but there is still some some reasons that some of you may want to run some of these the, the bridge officer combos you know maybe you have some unique build that will work on the talis but wouldn't work on the valdor or maybe you know your beam overload build you could make it work on the legendary d7 but if you had the temporal you'd be able to get a bit more of a punch out of it so there's there's pros and cons here the the legendary versions are certainly competitive except for the the legendary connie that's just another 404 america worker cruiser um but there are other connies out there that you'd probably want to use instead for like a dps point of view like the america worker flight deck carrier you know that that'd probably be a better connie for most people but if you're just looking for a solid 5-3 connie that you could get on account wide unlock this 23rd century ship pack option would get you that and to conclude everything here i want to go over where i would place this bundle on the tier list and what three options i would pick from the bundle so for me the top three options if you're doing the pick three choice pack which is all that i think you should do i really do not think the mega is worth it on this one I would go through and grab the 23rd century ship pack. That is the main reason to get this bundle in the first place, in my opinion. I would then get the Jemadar Lay Battlecruiser. It's not necessarily the best ship, but it is still something that you might have fun putting on an alt. And having that console may be fun for, for your playstyle, or you may end up wanting to do PvP and it may come in handy there. The third option I would go for is the 50 Master Keys. So, again, 23rd Century Ship Pack, Jemadar Light Battlecruiser, and 50 Master Keys. The Walker is just so incredibly weak in the current state of the game that I think it's just an easy skip. I would recommend against getting the Mega. If you really want to dump 250 bucks into the game, get the Pick 3 Choice Pack. And if you really want to have the Walker, then take that extra 100 bucks and grab the Legendary walker from the discovery federation captain bundle that's going to cost you 7800 zen during a sale a 35 percent sale so just take your money and after you get that pick three choice pack grab the legendary disco federation captain bundle and then dump the rest of your zen into the phoenix packs to get some upgrades that would be my recommendation and i think if you went through and did that you'd be satisfied with the 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 ships you're messing around with now as for where i would place this bundle on the tier list i would have to go a or b tier i'm gonna lean towards a tier because i think the 23rd century ship pack alone really carries this bundle quite heavily the gemadar light battlecruiser isn't the best ship in the game but it's still something good enough that you may have may have fun with it so i think a tier is fine it's certainly not s tier if the Lobby ship was better, you know, I, I think S tier would have been a possibility. But with the Lobby ship being so incredibly weak and the Lockbox ship bordering on the edge of, you know, being mediocre for most people, I, I think A or B tier is, is fitting for this. And A tier with those three ships being good, I, I think that that's fine. So... Hopefully this has helped you understand whether or not this bundle is worth it. I know this bundle has gone a bit of hatred online, a lot of negative feedback, uh, because there are legendary versions of these ships. However, just because there's legendary versions doesn't necessarily mean that the non-legendary versions are worthless. In this case, some of these ships, like the 23rd century ones, they have setups that you just don't really get with their legendary versions again look at the the temporal light cruiser versus the the legendary version of it which goes from a 5-3 with the the temporal version to a 4-4 miracle worker set up on the the legendary one here so it just you, you know legendary doesn't necessarily mean the best and you have to keep that in mind so the the ships are solid for the 23rd century ship pack and i think that alone is going to make this bundle a bit better than some of the other options we've had this year so 
That's my thoughts. Feel free to drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord and ask away. Thank you all for tuning in. And again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. See you guys around.